coming to the stability of the shoulder joint so the stability of the shoulder joint is based on the glenoid labrum the upward displacement and the coracoacromian arch the abduction rotator cuff and the downward displacement you can remember it as g u a r d gord as a mnemonic so first it is the glenoid labrum the stability is retained by the glenoid labrum where it will deepen the narrow shallow socket of the glenoid cavity to keep the ball of the head of the humerus in position and then the upward displacement of the humeral head is prevented by the long tendon of the biceps and the coracoacromian arch so when the arm is pendent the long head of biceps it passes across the front of the head of the humerus like this and in lateral rotation of humerus the tendon occupies the summit of the head and helps abduction by preventing the upward displacement of the head and this coracoacromian arch is formed by the under surface of the coracoid process the coracoacromian ligament and the under surface of the acromion process and the arch is separated from the supraspinatus muscle this is supraspinatus muscle by a very large subacromion bursa which acts as a secondary socket for the head of the humerus and allows lateral rotation of the humerus in raising the arm above head or in other words it is the overhead abduction movement this bursa becomes the secondary socket for the head of the humerus when the greater tubercle it impinges on to the lateral border of coracoacromian arch that is to prevent the impingement of the greater tubercle on to the coracoacromian arch it will laterally rotate taking the subacromian bursa as the secondary socket and the other one is abduction the abduction of the humerus it is the lower weak part of the capsule which is supported by long head of triceps and the teres major that's how the stability during abduction is also maintained and the most important as we said is the rotator cuff which is formed by these four muscles it is the supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor and subscapularis which keep where the head very much in position to the glenoid fossa and all these muscles at its insertion they blend with the fibrous capsule making it strong anteriorly superiorly and posteriorly and supporting the head of the humerus into the glenoid fossa the tonic contractions of these muscles keeps the ball very much in contact with the socket of the glenoid fossa that is the reason it is also called as guardian of the joint 
Coming to the downward displacement, the supraspinatus here, the supraspinatus and tension of the upper part of the capsule, coracohumeral ligament, all these three, they prevent the downward displacement of the humerus. This is how the stability of the shoulder joint is being maintained. Also, a very quick view of the maintaining stability of the joint is by the glenoid labrum, which deepens the socket, the coracohumeral ligament, this one, which is a cut part here, you can see. Coracohumeral ligament prevents the downward displacement and musculotendinous cuff, that is the rotator cuff. It keeps the ball in contact with the socket and the coracoacromian arch and the long head of the biceps, this one. Okay. That prevents the upward displacement of the humeral head and the long head of triceps, the long head of triceps anterior major, they support the lower weak part of the capsule during abduction. Coming to the relations of the joint, very important. Above, it is the supraspinatus, and then there is a subacromian bursa, then it is the coracoacromian arch. So the subacromian bursa is between the supraspinatus and the coracoacromian arch, and it forms the secondary socket for the head of the humerus during the lateral rotation of the humerus, the head of the humerus during overhead elevation of the upper limb. Coming to the relations below, it is the quadrangular space, here you can see, which is bounded by teres minor, long head of triceps, teres major below, and the surgical neck of the humerus laterally. So this transmits the axillary nerve and the posterior circumflex humeral vessels. All these structures happen to be the relations below the shoulder joint. Coming to the front of the shoulder joint, it is the multipinnate subscapularis muscle. Then it is the coracobrachialis and short head of biceps because they take the common origin from the tip of the coracoid process. So these form the relations in front. Coming to the relations behind, it is the infraspinatus, which is cut here. And then it is the teres minor. They form the posterior relations of the joint. And within the joint is the intracapsular origin of the long head of biceps tendon. And the deltoid muscle, this one, this is the cut edge of the deltoid muscle. So this deltoid muscle covers the front of the joint, lateral to the joint, and behind the joint also. So it covers all the three aspects of the joint. So this is what is the diagram you're supposed to draw during the answer when it asks the relations of the shoulder joint. So this is what is the glenoid cavity. The blue one is represented by the glenoid labrum. The pink one is the synovial cavity. And the purple one is the synovial membrane where it shows the openings into the subscapularis bursa and the infraspinatus bursa. And the green one here is the fibrous capsule. Okay. Now coming to the relations above, it is the supraspinatus. Then it is the subacromian bursa. Then it is the coracoacromian arch. This is the acromian process, coracoacromian ligament, 
and the coracoid process and the anterior fibers of the deltoid, upper fibers of the deltoid. Coming to the relations below, it is the long head of the triceps, anterior major. This is the subscapularis muscle. So this forms the quadrangular space which has the axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral vessels. Coming to the structures that are related anteriorly is the subscapularis muscle separated by the subscapular bursa from the fibrous capsule here and the coracobrachialis and the short head of biceps and then the anterior fibers of the deltoid. Coming to the relations posteriorly, they are the supraspinatus here, sorry, infraspinatus here and the posterior fibers of the deltoid. So this is a schematic sagittal section of the shoulder joint representing the relations. So this is how uh, you can also draw the flow chart where the superior relations being the deltoid current chromian arch, subacromian bursa and supraspinatus. Anteriorly, there is subscapularis, short head of biceps, coracobrachialis and anterior fibers of the deltoid. Posteriorly, it is the infraspinatus, teres minor and posterior fibers of the deltoid. Inferiorly, it is the long head of triceps, the teres major and then axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral vessels. So now let us see the bursae that are in relation to the shoulder joint. The most important function of the bursa is to reduce the friction between the tendons, joint capsule and bone during the movements. And these bursae are very much prone to be inflamed during injury to the rotator cuff muscles. So in repeated friction to these uh, bursae, they get inflamed and infected as well, causing a severe pain at the shoulder joint. So to name, there are three very important bursae. It is the subscapularis bursa, which is between the tendon of subscapularis and the fibrous capsule and communicates with the joint cavity through the gap between the superior and middle glenohumeral ligaments. The other one being the infraspinatus bursa, occasionally it communicates with the joint cavity which is present between the tendon of the infraspinatus and the fibrous capsule. And the other most important one is the subacromian bursa, which is between the supraspinatus deltoid and the coracoacromian arch. So this bursa, it extends laterally onto the deltoid and the greater tubercle or humerus as well. And the important aspect of the subacromian bursa is it acts as a secondary socket to the head of the humerus to allow lateral rotation of humerus during overhead elevation of the arm. And this subacromian bursa do not communicate with the shoulder joint space or the joint cavity. There are a number of non-communicating bursa found around the shoulder joint which can be above the acromion process between the capsule and the coracoid process and behind the coracobrachialis muscle and between teres major and the long head of triceps and in front of the tendon of latissimus dorsi at its insertion into the floor of the intertubercular sulcus as well. So wherever there is more movement that is seen, 
to reduce the friction between these tendons and muscles these bursae these are all non communicating bursae that are present the communicating bursae are only two that is the subscapularis bursa and occasionally the infraspinatus bursa yeah here you can see the non communicating bursa as well this is the subcoracoid bursa which is between the capsule and the coracoid process this is the subacromium bursa which extends laterally over the deltoid and the greater tubercle also and then this is the extension of the synovial membrane forming a bursa for the long head of the triceps within the intertubercular sulcus this is the subscapular bursa which communicates with the joint space between the superior and middle glenohumeral ligaments coming to the arterial supply so the arterial supply or the blood supply to the shoulder joint is by the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries the suprascapular artery and the circumflex scapular artery which is a branch of the subscapular artery once the subscapular artery gives off the circumflex scapular artery it descends down alongside of thoraco dorsal nerve as thoraco dorsal artery coming to the nerve supply it is the axillary nerve which is a content of the quadrangular space suprascapular nerve which is seen in the supraspinatus as well as infraspinatus winding around the glenohumeral notch and the lateral pectoral nerve this is what is the nerve supply of the joint coming to the movements of the shoulder joint as we said that it is the most mobile joint so it has varied movements which are flexion and extension which occur in sagittal plane abduction and adduction which occur in coronal plane and medial rotation and lateral rotation which occur in transverse plane and there is a combination of all these movements which is called as circumduction which is a conical movement that occurs at the shoulder joint and all these movements they occur in different axes that is the reason the shoulder joint is a multi axial synovial ball and socket type of joint now let us see each movement in detail so the active movements the flexion and extension they take place at right angles to the plane of body of scapula through an axis that is passing through the humeral head and is perpendicular to the glenoid cavity in flexion the arm moves forwards and medially and the muscles that are responsible for the flexion are the clavicular head of the pectoralis major and the anterior fibers of the deltoid and the movement is contributed also by the coracobrachialis and short head of biceps and in extension the arm moves backwards and laterally the muscles that are contributing for the extension are mainly the posterior fibers of the deltoid and the latissimus dorsi muscle and are contributed by teres major long head of triceps and the sternocostal head of the pectoralis major and these movements they happen along the transverse axis 
which is passing through the humeral head and is perpendicular to the glenoid cavity. Now the moments of abduction and adduction, they take place parallel to the plane of the body of scapula along the anteroposterior axis which passes through the head of the humerus and is parallel to the glenoid cavity. In abduction, the arm is moved away from the trunk. During this type of motion, the head of the humerus is moved down and is glided within the socket superiorly. In adduction, the arm is moved towards the trunk and during this movement, the head of the humerus moves upwards and is glide inferiorly in the socket of the glenoid cavity. So the muscles that are responsible for abduction are the deltoid, the supraspinatus which initiates abduction, serratus anterior and upper and lower fibers of trapezius. And the muscles that are responsible for adduction are the pectoralis major, the latissimus dorsi, the short head of biceps and the long head of triceps. A little more about abduction is it happens with prime movers and the synergists. The prime movers of abduction are the supraspinatus which initiates the abduction and is maintained by the deltoid. And the synergists are the set muscles that are the subscapularis, infraspinatus and teres minor. If any of these uh, movements are hampered, to restore any movement, the head of the humerus should always be mobilized in the direction the joint glides. For example, when the abduction movement is hampered, the head of the humerus should be mobilized in the inferior direction so that the ball of the head of the humerus sits in the socket of the glenoid fossa. As we said that the abduction is carried along by various muscles which are prime movers and the synergists. It's a complex movement. It is a conjoint action by these two, the prime movers being the deltoid and supraspinatus and the synergists as we said are the sit muscles which are the subscapularis, infraspinatus and teres minor. So from 0 degrees to 180 degrees, this is all is abduction. After 90 degrees, it is called as overhead abduction or elevation of the upper limb over the head. So from 0 to 30 degrees, it is carried on by the action of supraspinatus muscle. That is the reason the supraspinatus, it initiates the abduction movement and is taken over by the deltoid muscle which is innervated by axillary nerve till about 90 degrees. From 90 degrees to 120 degrees 
from here onwards the other joints of the pectoral girdle also they contribute till about 90 degrees it is occurring at glenohumeral joint above 90 degrees it is the complex joints of the shoulder girdle that also help in overhead abduction so from 90 degrees to 120 degrees there is rotation of the scapula which is carried on by the trapezius which is supplied by the spinal accessory nerve and the lower five digitations of the serratus anterior muscle which is supplied by the long thoracic nerve and from 120 degrees to 180 degrees where the upper limb becomes vertical is carried over by infraspinatus and little bit of contribution by the teres minor as well the infraspinatus supplied by the suprascapular nerve and the teres minor again is supplied by the axillary nerve from the pseudoganglion where the lateral rotation is occurring so that the impingement of the greater tubercle at the coracoacromian arch is spared so when there is lateral rotation the head of the humerus takes the subacromian bursa as its secondary socket for the further elevation up to 180 degrees wherein the glenoid cavity is facing directly upwards with the rotation of the scapula so the range of the movements would be 0 to 60 degrees where the humerus is rotated medially from 60 to 90 degrees the humerus moves in the plane of the scapula and from 90 to 120 and above the humerus is rotated laterally there is a lateral rotation which helps in overhead abduction of the limb coming to the medial and lateral rotations which takes place around the vertical axis and the axis extends from the center of the head of the humerus to the capitulum it passes through the capitulum in medial rotation the hand moves medially it is represented with mid flexion at the elbow joint so these movements are represented with mid flexion of the elbow joint so when the hand moves medially it is the medial rotation and is contributed by the pectoralis major anterior fibers of deltoid latissimus dorsi and teres major and is also contributed by subscapularis muscle so when the hand is moved medially the head of the humerus is moved anteriorly and it glides posteriorly within the socket and in lateral rotation the hand is moved laterally when the hand is moved laterally the head of the humerus moves posterior and it glides anteriorly within the socket and is contributed by the posterior fibers of the deltoid infraspinatus and teres minor the circumduction movement is the combination of all the movements that are occurring at the shoulder joint that is abduction flexion extension and adduction and it is a conical movement 
that happens at the shoulder joint which is a combination of all the prime moments so this is how is the uh, flow chart you can represent the moments that is the flexion where the arm moves forward medially the main contributing muscles are the clavicular head of pectoralis major and anterior fibers of the deltoid and the extension is where the arm moves backwards laterally and the main muscles that contribute for extension being the posterior fibers of deltoid and latissimus dorsi and abduction is when the hand moves away from the trunk where 0 to 15 degrees is by supraspinatus and till 90 degrees is by deltoid and the overhead abduction is by the trapezius the upper and middle fibers of trapezius and the serratus anterior where the middle fibers of trapezius keep the scapula stabilized and adduction where the arm moves towards the trunk and then uh, the medial rotation is when the arm moves medially which is mainly by subscapularis and the lateral rotation is when the hand moves laterally the main muscles being the infraspinatus teres minor and posterior fibers of deltoid